may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, share, subscribe, like this video, make sure you put your prayer request in the bottom. Today's slow day, I uh, watched Lisa's program, Lisa called me earlier and was talking to me about uh, what was said about the red heifers, that they're not real. They are very real, God also confirmed with us that they were going to be sacrificed on this day. So, If anybody else is saying anything else towards that, that means they're trying to cover it up, that's already happened. But you will know. In the next couple of days, things will start to roll out. You'll know, without doubt. Uh, Taiwan's had multiple earthquakes tonight. It's like off the chain, how many they've had. So the ground's shaking. We've had some major solar events. Israel right now is under fire from the proxies of Iran. This has been going on for hours. There has been talks of something happened in Iran. We don't know. We haven't had that confirmed. But there was something blew up there in Iran. Nobody knows yet what's happening there so we don't have any boots on the ground or any known knowledge of anything that pretty much happens in Iran we're not going to find out about it so like I said today was Passover now God told us about this day and it was mostly about the red heifers that's what he was stressing to us about the rest of the week is us something else that's why I need you to keep your eyes open and your ears open dreams visions anything that you think is out of the ordinary, make sure you put it in the comments this week. Because right now we're going to need everybody's eyes. We need well, This is one big team now. We need to get everybody on board that can. Okay? That's why we started the channel. It's for these days like this. The days that are close to the rapture. And we're definitely, definitely close to the rapture. So, I'm going to do about a 15 minute program tonight. Let everybody get in bed, because I think this week's going to be a long week for all of us. I really do. I really feel like that. I think the most, uh, the biggest part of it will start towards the weekend. I think that's what God was showing us, that this weekend on is going to be something to behold. We don't know what that is. And I've had many people ask me, well, what do you think is the rapture? No. God has never told me about the rapture, okay? He's never gave me a date. I want to be specific. I know the rapture's coming, but he's never said, Chris, it's going to be here or there. Nothing like that. He's gave me warnings about days, but not of the rapture. Like I said, when I saw the rapture, it was caught, completely caught me off guard. So even I was, even though I'm looking at all times, it still, I wasn't expecting it at the time that I saw it. So what do I expect? I expect things to get way worse between NATO and Russia. And I do believe Iran and Israel. This is not even over by a long shot. These two. Iran is not going to let this go, okay? For one thing, like I said, this Antichrist spirit has taken over the world. It's dominating the world as we know it. That's why we see all the earthquakes, the volcanoes, and the storms and everything acting the way they are right now. That's why we see this thing that they call global warming is the tribulation that's on its way. We see Jacob's trouble literally brewing by the minute. So we're definitely there. Now, this story came out. Russian president has extended his best wishes for the Passover holiday. This came out tonight. President Vladimir Putin has given his best wishes to Russian Jews for the Passover holiday. Remember, there is a lot of Russian Jews in Israel. Underscoring the community's importance of fostering uh, interethnic and uh, something dialogue. The president's letter was published on the Kremlin website on Monday. Passover is a major Jewish holiday that uh, communicates uh, the uh, liberation of the uh, an exodus of the Israelis and from Egypt. This year Passover begins on Sunday on April 22nd and ends on April 30th. Now our Passover, you know what it is. It's resurrection. 
as I said, they did not accept their Messiah. That's why the tribu that's why they will go through the tribulation, so they will accept their Messiah. The ancient holiday, particularly revered by the followers of Judaism, serves as a reminder of the significant milestones of the history of the Jewish people, liberation and centuries of slavery and long awaited uh, attainment of freedom. It symbolizes the truth of ideas and goodness and justice, the message reads. The president further said that the Jewish community in Russia plays an important role in uh, fostering ethno ethnic and uh, different dialogues, actively engages in a nurturing, nurturing the younger generation, educational activities, and so on. Such a remarkable and essential work is worthy of the deepest recognition Putin underlined. According to the Jewish Agency for Israel, the largest Jewish nonprofit in the world, there were 150,000 Jews living in Russia in 2021. At the time, the country ranked seventh in the world in terms of the size of the Jewish community. So they've got a big community there. Now, what we've been doing slowly for years, Mom did this. Mom was a big, uh, a big person when it came to uh, bringing the Jews out of Russia and bringing them into uh, and back to Israel. And what we would do is we would uh, we go through a uh, fellowship of the Jews. Uh, that's in our description box, and we would actually uh, sponsor that. Me and her both did that quite a few times over the years. Mom was a big; she loved doing it. That was her thing. Mom loved the Jewish people like no other. She just loved the Jewish people, and um, I got that from her. And because uh, I remember when I was growing up, you know, my family was always, they loved the Jews. They loved Jesus and they loved the Jews. And they always told me to watch Israel. If they're all gone and I'm the only one left, and that's exactly what happened. I'm the only one left in the family to watch the Jews. That's why I can sit here and tell you each and every night that we're in the last days. A lot of it, God has given me this information, and he's confirmed it through many multiple people. But number one is I can watch the Jews and see that Jacob's trouble is starting to come. And that's how I know that we will soon be out of here. It says NATO allies ready to station nuclear weapons on the territory. And we talked about this tonight, how dangerous this is. And this right here is another provocation of what we told you about this nuclear war between NATO and Russia. It's inevitable. It's going to happen. That's why God warned us years ahead of time so we'd be ready for it. And to put nuclear weapons in Poland is that's something Russia draws a, a knee. They're not going to let that happen. That's when they will definitely move to do something. I don't know what they'll do, but I just don't see them letting it happen. And that's probably why we're in the season that we're in and we're seeing this stuff happen. It says here, Poland is ready to host nuclear weapons should Alliance move to reinforce its eastern flank. Now, the word is, this has already went through. If our allies decided to deploy nuclear weapons as part of a nuclear sharing also on our territory to strengthen our security, NATO's eastern flank, we are ready for it, Polish president said on an interview Monday. Now, if they're talking about this, it's already been done. Understand, these people are... Well, Unbelievable liars. For instance, they said, we're not going to send tanks to Ukraine. Little behold, they'd already sent them there, but they was already telling us they hadn't. If they're telling us that there's no nuclear weapons there, that means that if he's talking about this, the program going to share these weapons, that means they're already on their way or they're already there. You got to think like these people are so corrupt and so evil. More than two years of war in Ukraine has spurred NATO countries in Eastern Europe close to Russia territory to invest heavily in their military strength. Although they do not possess nuclear weapons in alliance, the U.S., the United Kingdom, and France have nuclear weapons, but several European bases host U.S. tactical nuclear weapons. That's that gravity bomb. I think they're like 20, 25 kiloton, I think. I'm not sure. Some of them reach up to 100 to 200 kiloton. Russia, which is the world's largest nuclear arsenal, said in 2023 that it started transferring uh, tactical nuclear weapons to one of its key allies, Belarus, which, like I said, Belarus will play a major role. It's obliterated in World War III, but it plays a major role in World War III. Russia used Belarus as a springboard for its full-scale invasion of Ukraine. 
Belarus borders NATO countries Poland and Latifa. Poland and NATO members Lithuania also border Russians enclave of Kilingrad. That's where that Sawaski Gap is. And Belarus and Russia right now are massing troops there to try to take that back from the Baltics. That's Poland and, uh, and Lithuania. We do believe sometime in the next couple of months, it could be sooner, they'll try to take that. Because Belarus was shown last month practicing on taking it. That would link up Kilingrad. Now, the only way, the reason why they'd want to link up Kilingrad with Belarus is if they do believe World War III is imminent. And they can't get their ships into Kilingrad or planes over top because of the Baltic's air defenses. So they would have to have a place on the ground that they could link up, and that would be Belarus through the Swalski Gap up towards Kilingrad. Now, there's a lot of nuclear weapons in Kilingrad itself. So you see how this is working out and how this is going. You can see it a mile away how this is going to play out, and it's not going to be good. Poland and NATO member of Lithuania also boarded the Russia enclave of Kilingrad, like we just said. Home of a significant, and I mean it's huge, Russian military presence and the Moscow's Black Sea Fleet. The Kremlin is increasingly militarized in Kilingrad, and I mean majorly. The U.S. and Poland have been discussing the possibility for some time, Duba said, when approaching the comment on Monday that the Pentagon referred to last week of the, the Newsweek to the Polish government. In the context of worsening situa security situations, especially threats posed by the Russian Federation, including the nuclear spear. NATO nuclear deterrence is an, an important factor in ensuring the security of Poland and its entire alliance, the Poland Defense Ministry told Newsweek in a statement. Warsaw supports NATO's actions and initiatives designed to strengthen the alliance's nuclear deterrent, not least the nuclear sharing program, the government said. The program refers to leveraging nuclear weapons for a collective defense for all the alliance members. These issues are a matter of uh, constellations between allies in the form of NATO as well as the bilaterary in which Poland takes active part, the Polish ministry said. Poland has been trying to get these nuclear weapons for a while, and I believe they've already got them. The, Euro, the war in Ukraine pulled weapon, nuclear weapons back into the spotlight. They're everywhere now. They're on the move, too. Even the United States' nuclear weapons are all on the move right now. There's no talk of it. Nobody wants to talk about it, but it, they're on the move. As Russian troops poured into Ukraine in late February 2022, President Putin placed Russia's nuclear deterrence forces on high alert. They're still there today. Both countries are. Just, like I said, a couple of nights ago, this close to the end of the world, and people don't even know it happened. Most people won't even believe it ever that it was going to happen, but it was that close. And this was like a week ago, and it's still escalating. It's not stopping. Eventually, the rapture happens and this thing goes off. I mean, it's going to be like that. I've warned people for two years. I've seen it. It happens so fast, you will not know what hits you. I've told you. Forces on high alert months later, Russian Foreign Minister uh, Lavrov said that the risk of nuclear conflict were considerable. Now they're saying it's inevitable. This is coming from Russia. That nuclear war will happen. And I'm here to tell you it will happen too. We've all seen it. Uh, Russian officials such as the former president, Dmitry Mefedev, which is a total nut job, and Russian state television commentators have frequently mentioned the prospect of nuclear, nuclear war. In other words, they want it so bad it's you can't stand it. Some state media hosts and guests have suggested that Moscow should just launch nuclear strikes on countries such as the U.S. and U.K., and eventually they do. It does happen. The idea of nuclear conflict, once unthinkable, has become a subject of debate. It's not unthinkable now. Now they want to. See, the thing is of wanting to reduce the population, everything, everything looks in, invitable to these people now because they don't like hum These people hate humans. So you've got these elites and these governments that want to do away with people as it is. So nuclear war don't seem so bad. It could get rid of a lot of people. This is how these people are thinking now. This is not like it was when I was young when you try to spare life and try to save life. These people want to eliminate life. Literally. These people are, are like Hitler. And people don't realize these elites and these rich and powerful people are dangerous. And God knows that. That's why the rapture is going to happen because he's going to let them destroy themselves and we're going to be gone. 
Vladimir Putin has brainwashed his country's nuclear sword as an attempt to compel Ukraine to uh, basically give their country over to Russia's demands and deter NATO from intervention. In March 2024, Putin and Russia's weapon systems were ready for nuclear confrontation with NATO as discussions swirled around potential development of alliance troops in Ukraine, which is happening right now as we speak also. Talking about each country's wanting, and France just sent a whole bunch of them in there, and I talk, pretty much a whole army battalion they sent in there, and Russia wiped them out. People were this close, like I said. Hold on to Jesus, grab his leg, and don't let go. Do I believe the rapture soon? Absolutely. I agree with Lisa Boyce. We all feel it. We all see it. Now, today was a little slow, but we kind of knew that because the heifers would go today. Rest of the week, towards the end of this week, and that's when we'll start watching. I want everybody, uh, eyes open, ears open. we got to work as one team. And I've seen where everybody saw the 44s. Tons. The list goes on and on. Thank you all for putting that in the comments. I can't believe how many people have been seeing those 44s and 4s. We have all been seeing them. So, just like Lisa Boy seeing a 333, we've seen that too. The 333, 333, 333. What is God telling us yet? We don't know, but it's not time for us to know yet, but we're close to knowing what these numbers mean. So just pay attention, listen to God, get in your prayer closet, start talking to Jesus and praying, because we're very close, people. We don't have to deal with this much longer. Just hang in there just a little bit longer, but we're getting ready to go home, okay? I promise you, we're getting 100%. Don't let anybody discourage you right now. We are leaving, and we are going home. You are the generation that will see Jesus in the clouds very soon. It is you. This ain't going to go by and it not happen. I've seen the rapture. God showed it to me. It is real. And I've seen it happen. And it does happen very soon. So be ready. Try to get as many people on that boat before it's too late. Trust the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Jesus... One through five, Jesus died on the cross for our sins, past, present, and future. He died, was buried, rose again on the third, third day, according to the scriptures. Also, trust in the blood of Jesus. If you're lost out there, call upon him today. We're almost out of here. Okay? So get on that boat while you can. Don't matter what you've done, what you Satan tells you you've done, you can turn it around right now. Just call on Jesus. Say, listen, I'm done with this. I want to be with you and believe what Jesus did on the cross. With his blood, okay? That's all you got to do. And he will come and seal you in the day of redemption, which is probably a couple of weeks the way it's going, because the world's pretty much on fire, okay? Uh, literally, the world is burning as we know it, literally. And we've just got to be ready to get as many people, or try to get as many people on that boat as possible before it's too late. Thank each and every one of you for uh, all the stuff today, all the super stickers and all the ones who bought me coffee. God bless each and every one of you. Like I said, thank you for being here, bringing me into your household, working as a team, because we're going to have to definitely work as a team, a family right now, because each day from here on out, it's going to get wild. I love each and every one of you. If I don't see or hear from you again, I'll see you in heaven. <laughs>